A big Jag XJ. Back in the day, that used to mean a very quaint thing full of wood and leather that might not start tomorrow morning. Nowadays, it's a whole different story. They got a new high tech V6. This thing's all aluminum skin, and they have more screens inside the cabin than almost anything on the road. Let's drive this 2013 Jag XJ all wheel drive and check the tech. Now, the current generation XJ is not so much a pretty or elegant car to me like it used to be, as much as it is a handsome and a very present vehicle. It definitely makes a statement as you roll up in one. But your key styling cues here are three things the narrow blade tail lights in the back, very distinctive, the blackout C pillars that make the back of the roof appear to float, except on a black car where the effect is canceled out, and the Jaguar face, which is now the new family grill. Now, before we even get in this guy, I want to know who's paying off Jaguar. Is it the chiropractor's union or the orthopedic surgeon's union? One of them's going to make a ton of money on this guy because of this big wide sill. You see, it sticks out so far that every damn time I get it out of this guy, I bang my Achilles tendon on it. Give me about 150 reps of that, and I'm in the hospital getting it sewn up again. Now, I don't know why Jaguar keeps sending us cars that have such ugly color schemes. I was encouraged by the black on the outside, but not by this color of a cheap synthetic baseball mitt on the inside. Let's get to the tech. Now, you got two big screens. The one here on the left is still pretty revolutionary, a 12-inch wide-profile LCD for the instrument panel. There are no dials or gauges in this car, with the exception of the clock, if you want to count that. Fuel, temperature, speed, tachometer, and those can change and morph into a different type of screen. Sometimes the tech gives way to warnings, and the whole thing turns red when you're in dynamic mode or blue when you're in winter driving mode, so it's very evocative. And as you can see, the map quality is pretty good. I've always been pretty pleased with Jaguar's map quality, and it's very well rendered, but pretty basic. You've got a 3D mode, you've got a 2D mode, and you've got north up. There isn't a lot of nonsense like fly through buildings, there's no Google Earth, there's nothing of the really advanced type of map display, but they get the job done. Getting around there, they've got a new interface for the different destination menus. Address is the one you'll use the most often, but they've also got some oddballs like getting to a highway by route number. When would I do that? Or coordinates? What is this thing, a Land Rover? San Francisco, California. I give up. If they can't recognize that, it ain't much good to me. So I'll be tapping things in over here on the screen. As you can see, this car is kind of pokey when you're entering things on the on-screen interface. So it's an improvement, but it's still kind of a, an underperformance system with either its dopey voice command or the fact that it takes a very long time to tap things in on the screen. Now, in terms of media, you've got AM, FM, satellite radio free for three months and HD radio on this guy as well. Under My Music, you find all the other interesting choices, and yes, they break up radio from My Music, which always makes me nuts. Here's what an iPod interface looks like. They do a pretty good job of calling out the, the navigation. I find the buttons and all are very clear, but I wish they would use more screen real estate for things like titles. Bluetooth streaming worked yesterday, won't work at all today, but it has a pretty good support for meta tags and was pretty good at navigating my actual music collection, but that was yesterday. You've also got 30 gigabytes of hard drive space in this car, something else that I don't think is terribly exciting. What you do have are a whole lot of surround modes, from standard stereo to Meridian to Dolby PL2 to DTS. And that's because we have the top Meridian sound system here. This guy is 825 watts and 20 speakers. Now, of course, the Jaguar is full of nice amenities inside the cabin, especially an XJ. You'll notice, of course, their trademark pop-up shift rotating deal here for park, reverse, neutral, drive, and sport mode. When you're in reverse, you do have a standard backup camera and front and rear sensors. No extra cost on those. Next to it here is the winter driving mode I mentioned earlier. Right below that is dynamic driving mode, your most aggressive recurving of the entire drive. Drivetrain. Related to the drivetrain controls, though, are this eco button over here, which I pushed a lot because this car has automatic start stop. And as you'll see when we get on the road, I'm not a huge fan of it in this case. Now, Jaguar has lots of little ergonomic quirks throughout this car. First of all, this is apparently a cell phone bin, but it's too weird for a modern phone that's nice and tall, and it's not wide enough for it to go sideways. So it's basically useless. They went to the effort of making a touch sensitive glove box release. I never had a problem releasing a glove box with an actual button or lever, but I guess that's an identifying principle for the Jaguar brand. And the same thing goes for the overhead lights. Nothing moves, you just touch them. It's cool. I don't know that it gets us anywhere. 
And this switch over here for the steering wheel heater is so big and so touchy, you'll be turning on the wheel heater all the time, believe me. And when you want to go verify if it's on or off, you can't because the little indicator light isn't bright enough to be seen in the daylight. So you just kind of got to hold it and say, is it a hot day or is the wheel on? Not available here would be lane departure warning, whether it's active or passive, not here, or front collision prevention, even though you can get the car with optional adaptive cruise control. And the overhead dual panoramic sunroof, which is not really panoramic because it's got a big old bar in the middle, that is standard as well on an XJ. But that one over the second row is really shallow. I'm not sure it's that well done compared to having a big glass top here. Now here in the snoot, we've got a three liter supercharged direct injected V6. And this is a big story because this car used to come with a V8 only, a big old five liter. You can still get that, but this is the new smart motor in the XJ. The numbers, 340 horsepower, 332 foot pounds of torque. This thing weighs a little over 4,100 pounds. By the way, 250 of that is all wheel drive gear but it gets up to 60 in 6.1 seconds while delivering 1624 MPG, which by the way is considered pretty good for its class. Thank you to the aluminum body and the now supercharged V6. Okay, so what's it like driving the XJ with all wheel drive and a supercharged V6? Well, the first thing I do is I turn off that auto start stop because I hate it. It's kind of crude. When it starts and stops, you're very aware of it. The whole car judders and shudders, and it sounds like a car starting, which is fine, except it's a Jaguar. It's not supposed to have moments like that. The next thing you notice is this engine is a doll. It just keeps coming. Great torque, very linear. The all-wheel drive in this car starts off being rear biased. It's a rear-wheel drive car that can activate the front paws. Think of it that way. This is definitely not a BMW. There's more roll and there's less road feedback than you'll get in a similar competing Beamer. So it's not a car I want to take in a street fight. It's a car I want to take on a weekend trip that has some great roads. And one last note, there's something about a Jaguar cabin and ride that really has a different kind of distinctive soulful luxury to it. There's something sort of quaint, sort of traditional, and sort of elegant about the cabins that these guys do. And it's a nice place to do your business. Okay, let's price this big black beast. We've got 76.6 as a base. That's for all wheel drive rolled in there. Really, two options to go CNET style. One is the Meridian Audio upgrade from base Meridian to 825 watts and 20 speakers, and that's going to run you 2300 bucks. Then there's adaptive cruise control. That alone is another 2300. I might leave that one out, but if I rolled it all in, we're at 81.3 CNET style for a car that's awfully cosseting and has some great tech as well as a few standout bugs. <laughs> <laughs> 